I'm John Phipps with U.S. Farm Report. I'm talking with Dan Bossy of Ag Resources. And Dan, you've had perhaps the best track record over the last 20 years in the analysis business. But is it getting tougher? I mean, I... Oh. It's, it's hard to keep that string going, isn't it? John, John it is getting tougher. I, you know, it, it just takes more resources. It takes more uh, energy. Uh, each morning you wake up and you're not quite sure what you're going to find uh, because it's now not only agriculture, but it's, it's the Shanghai market in China. How do you get rid of, yeah, how do you get rid of the 24-7 aspects of it, which is driving me crazy? You, you almost got 115 turn, doesn't mean anything anymore. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And it's not going to be long before we're trading 24 hours. I mean, it's just... That's real comfort, Dan. If, if the CME has to maintain their, their dominance, we've got to go to 24-hour trading. Right. But, you know, you now wake up in the morning. I used to wake up in the morning and look at things like uh, weather. What's the weather forecast for the Midwest? Is there going to be a drought? Now you wake up and you look at Shanghai. What's the copper market? What's driving economic activity? And so the world has really changed and it's, making, it's made our job more and more difficult. But it's also the reason that analysts now uh, are providing more in the, in the way of that service of somebody has to stand between you and a market that simply won't re relent, whether it doesn't care whether you want to go on holiday or not. No. Some uh, layer of protection there. Do you see the, your role as a market analyst shifting to provide different services to the clients you deal with? It does, and, and in fact, you know, we, we now publish every day of the week. Uh, it's, every day. Uh, instead of the old weekly newsletter? No, 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 no. You, you know, it used to be we sent out a, week, a newsletter once a week. We now publish three times during the week, uh, during the business day right. of the week, and then we publish once on Saturday. Are once you on tweeting, Sunday. though? Seriously? No, we're not tweeting yet. I, I'm not thank ready, you, thank I'm you. Not ready to I'm go there, I'm not the John. only dinosaur. What a relief. I'm not ready to go there. I mean, that's thank a, you. That, we, we do have this overload factor. But you know what? When market's opening Sunday now, we have to make opening calls for Sunday night. Uh, we have to give the Sunday producers. Sunday night has changed forever, hasn't it? We have to give the producers some view of what's going to happen in the week ahead. Well, speaking of that, what are the odds that the overnight trade is finally going to start going to mean something? In other words, where we close at 6 o'clock in the morning is where we open instead of resetting back to the previous day. Well, you know, I, I would imagine, John, in the not too distant future, because we're now seeing it in Canola, the ICE exchange, others, where we're just trading through reports. We're not stopping anymore other than to balance trades in the afternoon. This is just going to keep going on. So we're going to have to adjust to the opportunity to market crops and livestock almost every minute of the day. What? If if you could get your clients in one room, and you probably do, you'd say, Here, here's one tool, a new technique or a new device, a new, I don't care what you, what one thing would you like to see them do that would help you help them more? Listen, the one thing we tell our clients now recently is you need to know globally who is the lowest grain price seller and who is the highest grain price buyer. And so by saying that, Let's take example the wheat market. Right. You know, for the longest time it used to be the Russians, and the Russians right. would tend to undercut everyone else. When the Russians left, wheat prices rallied three and a half dollars. Uh, at this point, you know, the U.S. wheat is probably the cheapest protein wheat in the world, and we continue to sell it because we are the cheapest. So, as a U.S. farmer, it's no longer enough just to check your price at your local elevator down at the Gulf. We got to know what's going in raw in France. We got to know what's going on in North Africa. China, uh, Australia, and Canada. And so these are new issues that we need to follow, but if we are the low cost seller, you probably don't want to be marketing crops. If, if we own the world market, if we are the market in terms of the low cost seller, the odds of prices rallying are pretty good. Well, I, I tell people, if you have one banker, maybe you need two or three. Uh, you need to somehow spread that risk. You need to get more capital, and you can never go out of business by having too much money. I think we need to take insurance protection in this year. In other words, maybe buying puts or something. The one thing I'm not anxious to do is let go of the upside potential. Because our puts extremely expensive. They are expensive, I know. Uh -huh. But in a market that's this volatile, they're not going to get cheaper probably. Maybe after the crop report for a short period of time. But it, it is the price of we being in a very capital intensive business right now. Well, good, good luck to you and to all of our producers in marketing this year. I'm John Phipps talking with Dan Bossett.